This is O'Reilly Media. We're here at Oracle's Open World talking to Andrew Bayer of Cloudera. Andrew is also one of the main contributors to Jenkins. Jenkins has had a lot of activity in the last couple of months. Could you tell us a little bit about what are the changes in Jenkins since the split? Uh, well, one of the things that we're most excited about is the work that Charles Lowell and Kosuke Kawaguchi, the founder of, uh, of Jenkins, have been doing on extending the ability to write Jenkins plugins for Ruby, uh, with Ruby rather, so that uh, you now uh, can write a full plugin from beginning to end in an entirely Ruby way, not just write some code in JRuby here and you know, a little there. You can write the front end in ERBs. You can write all of your build logic uh, for your plugins in uh, Ruby. You build it without having to touch Maven. Um, it's just a pure Ruby lifecycle. Um, this is really exciting because it increases the range of developers who can contribute to uh, Jenkins and in the uh, range of possible plugins. Uh, so that, because, yeah, some of the plugins that may come out of that may be Ruby specific plugins, but a lot of them will be solving more general build problems that a Ruby developer may happen to come up with a fix for. Um, so it means that we're going to solve more problems, which is great. So I think I saw that Charles Nutter is participating in the Jenkins project. Is that true? Uh, not that I know of. Not directly. I mean, I, I believe he's a, a fan of the project, but okay. uh, I don't know uh, details. I mean, obviously, we're dependent on work he's done for the JRuby stuff. Okay. But, uh, but it's uh, Charles Lowell of the front side uh, in Texas has been doing uh, an immense amount of heavy lifting uh, with the Ruby side of things. Who are some of the other core contributors? There's a core contributor who also lives in the Bay Area? Uh, well, there's Kosuke, obviously, mm -hmm. uh, is the biggest contributor, mm -hmm. all told. Um, other major core contributors, let's see. Honestly, most of the major core contributors are scattered all around the world. Okay. Um, we've got uh, the most notable other person in the Bay Area, maybe uh, Tyler Croy, mm -hmm. who's incredibly proud of the fact that he's never written a line of Java in his life. Yeah. Um, but he's behind the Jenkins CI Twitter account, uh, mm -hmm. our blog, uh, and a lot of our community building. He's done, he, he's really uh, devoted to growing to the community and helping out users uh, regardless of, without having to write code to do it. He's particularly focused in non-Java uses. Yeah, yeah, that's, uh, he's, he's a Ruby and Python guy. Right, so, so in terms of Jenkins, it seems like Jenkins has kind of cornered that market. People who are using CI systems but who want to use alternative languages. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's uh, the biggest leap that Jenkins has made in the last couple of years. The big difference from its early days and from a lot of the open source CI uh, solutions that have come along before is that they've tended to be very narrowly focused. You know, cruise control .net, cruise control RB, um, buildbot in the Python world. Um, and initially, Jenkins was very Java focused um, and that it was written in Java, so it was most well known to the Java community. But Kosuke has always believed that it should be, shouldn't be just a Java CI tool and has worked hard to encourage plugin development to support other development uh, setups. And now, the, yeah, there is nothing Java specific about using Jenkins. It's, it's still probably used for more Java builds than anything else, but I'm not even sure about that. It could well be that Ruby or Python uh, could beat it. Um, Most of the use at Cloudera is for pure Java projects, or, or do you uh, have a lot of mixed projects? It's the, the, the actual source code is overwhelmingly Java. We've got some native code in Hadoop. We've got uh, some Python in some of our enterprise uh, applications. But we also have a lot of native packaging, uh, RPM and Debian for you know, uh, CentOS, Red Hat. How do you create those? Um, awkwardly. Yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 it's hard to come up with a really elegant uh, stack solution for the build there. I'm assuming you don't use the Maven RPM plugin. Uh, no, we don't. No. Um, we've looked into it. Uh, the uh, I think Hadoop is actually uh, planning to use FRO23 uh, for their next major release. Um, but I, I wanted to have a, a generalized solution across uh, various Maven and Ant projects.
So do you just use something like RPM build? Yeah, for, for yeah. RPM? RPM build with uh, various scripts and wrappers. Uh, and the way we're moving uh, is to having Jenkins control most of the workflow to have one job that creates the uh, source packaging that then calls other jobs to do the actual package builds on the 12 different platforms mm -hmm. and then pull them all back together again in the end to create repositories. That seems like a very common use case. People who yeah. have very complex Jenkins and or Hudson builds, they have to build a big <laughs> dependency tree of jobs. Yeah. They, they, um, sorry. Is, is that something that people are looking into maybe building in that intelligence into the CI tool? Very much so. That's that's another area that I think has really advanced in the last year or so. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, beyond which what, uh, you, you can do that now. Yeah. But is there some way that you could provide people with a sort of top-down intelligence? Yeah, there's, there's been some talk uh, and some ideas about running a workflow engine uh, kind of logic. The ability to, to uh, at a higher level, describe how your jobs relate to each other and what the, the order they should build in is, rather than having to do it in the more, the more ad hoc manner that you can do it now. It's still a lot better than, uh, than it was even six to nine months ago uh, with the parameterized trigger plugin, which gives you the ability to have a parent job that not just invokes other jobs and kicks them off separately, but invokes them in line and blocks until those jobs are done. So that you can run three jobs in parallel, and then if you've got four more jobs that depend on the results of those, have those run afterwards, and still have the whole build status in the end of the original job, of the parent job reporting on the results. Um, it's, that's an area that, that I, I'd run into in more enterprise uh, CI solutions in, you know, a few years ago and that initially I'd missed in Jenkins. Uh, so coming up with a way to get that easier to use is definitely an area we need to focus on and an area that we are focusing on. A lot of what you've talked about reminds me of a general computing platform. Yeah. And we spoke with Manek Sertani from Red Hat. He works on a project called InfiniSpan, which is a big <coughs> grid-based caching system. He said that that was sort of the logical evolution from a simple cache. When you talk about generalized systems that are parameterized and can execute code, is there something beyond this next level of where Jenkins is where the term continuous integration is just going to be inappropriate? I mean, are you yeah. really trying to build a sort of generalized computing node that could do much more than just build? Probably. Uh, it, it's, I think that it's probably a good idea not to get overly ambitious um, and not to try to write uh, one tool to rule them all. Um, I think Jenkins will always be best as a, a build tool, as a continuous integration, continuous deployment uh, sort of tool and a reporting tool on those, those things. But the fact is that, yeah, there is bleed. There, the, as you get to more complicated builds, it starts to resemble other workflows. Um, and if you can do one, you can do the other. Uh, the, the work that had to be done in core to support the Ruby plugin development uh, provides a lot of possibilities for other DSLs and uh, uh, using Jenkins as, as the basis for other tooling um, along the lines you're talking about, using it as, as uh, a framework rather than just a tool on its own. Um, I'm honestly not sure what will happen there. It's, it's going to evolve based on the usage, obviously. But uh, I, I do think that its biggest area is still going to uh, be builds, because okay. that's, that's a problem that we all have. Right. Um, and it's not, that problem isn't going to go away. So I, I hope that we can keep it, uh, keep growing it, but not lose touch with the, the, its core point. Otherwise, it could not be as useful. So you're for more focus. Even though you see that there's a lot of... I think the core, I, I like the idea, I think the, 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 the best ideas that Koske had in creating the project were, uh, first, how open he is to contributors and that he's got a passion for a really low barrier of entry so that we've got so many contributors running so many plugins. But I think even more than that is the, the, the plugin architecture, the extensibility, the idea that Jenkins core should enable you to extend it, that that should be its main purpose, that, that the core itself shouldn't 
be more than a collection of the absolute necessities and extension points. So that while I'm more interested in the build and keeping it the, the build functionality as a main focus, somebody else may want to take it in another direction. And I don't think that will create a problem. I don't think that that's going to cause issues because the platform, it's a platform, it's an extensible platform. And if somebody wants to use the, the opportunities it creates to create a more complex engine in a different direction, that's not going to cause any problems for, for builds um, because it's, the builds are done in the plugins. So as long as we continue to keep to the incredibly strong support for backwards compatibility, I don't foresee any issues there. Okay, so th this is my last question. Where do you want to see Jenkins in the next year? Where do you want to see it go? Keep going as it is. I mean, I think we've had a really great year. Uh, it's been a little bit dramatic at times, but we've continued to grow plugins dramatically. We've got over 450 now. We've continued to grow usage. Um, we've gotten more stable. Uh, we've introduced the LTS program so that we've now got uh, a benchmark, you know, a more stable release along the lines of the Ubuntu LTSs. Um, I don't think we need any radical changes. I think that I, I, I'm immensely proud of the the project and the community, and I think that we just need to keep doing what we've been doing: keep bringing in new people, keep solving problems that we haven't thought of before, and keep making sure it works. Okay, and it looks like you're doing a good job with that. Thank so you. Th thanks for uh, sitting down for an interview with us. And you're welcome. Good luck. Thank you very much.